Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to be looking at, is it possible to cut the heads off a pike with a two-handed greatsword? Stay tuned. So, one of the stories that often gets told about the 16th century, and Lands Connects in particular, is that the big two-handed swords uh, that double soldiers, double soldiers used, uh, were designed to cut through the heads of pikes so that these shock troops could break through enemy lines. Now, this is a long spear with a head kind of like a pike. It should be about twice this long. And so these spears were 16, 18, maybe even 20 feet long. And they usually tapered so that they were thicker at the butt and got thinner as they went out to the point. Now these spears out to the point, the wood, it's usually only about as big around as my thumb. Uh, usually ash, it looks like. Evidence for that comes from the Mary Rose, the wreck of the Mary Rose. Uh, and these often had langets on them. So langets are thin pieces of steel that extend down from the socket, down the shaft. And the purpose of langets is to reinforce the connection between the head and the wood. If you have a thin stick, right where it goes into a socket, that's where it can break. So I'll show you an example of some langets here. This is an original partisan, dates from probably right around 1500, and you can see the velvet is clearly not original, right? But the, the head and the langets are. So you can see that these langets are forge welded onto the socket and they extend down the shaft of this weapon. This is similar to what we see on pikes. And so it reinforces it. Does it prevent the heads from being cut off? Well, it probably helps, but there's a whole bunch of issues involved with this kind of idea that you can just cut the heads off a pike. So we can easily cut through a piece of wood as big around as my thumb. We've done other videos on that. That's not a problem. But if it's a really long stick that someone's holding, when you chop it, it's gonna move. Right? That makes it much more difficult. And if there are steel langets on there, it makes it even harder. So today, I'm gonna try and cut through some pieces of wood that one of the guys at Arms and Armor is bravely going to be holding while I swing a big sword at him, and we'll see what happens. So today I have our 15th century two-hander. This sword is five feet long. It's got a pretty massive blade. This is one of the types of swords from early in the Renaissance that would have been used to fight against people in pike formations. Some of them were even bigger than this, but I don't think that the size difference is going to make a big difference in our results. There's Patrick back there bravely holding one of our javelin sticks, which is a piece of ash about as big around as my thumb. Uh, we're gonna try and carefully do some cutting on it while he's holding it out as though it were a pike. Give Big it. sword, stick. So why don't you hold it a little bit higher here. There you go. Right, so I'm hitting this reasonably hard and you can see that it's cutting into it just fine, but because it's a long stick that Patrick's holding, it's not staying still for me to cut through it. Now, I could swing this thing way, way harder, but I don't think it's gonna have a really significant impact on what happens here. If we just laid this on the ground, I can chop it into two pieces, no problem. If it had langets and I just laid it on the ground and chopped it over and over again with a sword, I could cut through mild steel langets. It's gonna do a, a doozy on my blade, and I'm not gonna do it with this one because 
this is a sword that we're selling. <laughs> I don't want to wreck it. But I think this gives us some indication. And so this is a slightly larger piece of ash. Look, I have been cutting it. It's getting nicked. I'm hitting it pretty hard with this sword. This would totally go straight through a person. Uh, but it's not cutting through the pike, right? Instead, what we see is that hitting a pike with a big sword moves it out of the way, right? And if we had a line of pikemen holding their pikes, and I was doing, watch out, Patrick, some of these big sword motions that we see in the manuals on how to fight with these big swords, I could sweep those pikes out of the way and climb up on them, right? Which means I can get closer. The benefit of a pike is it keeps people 20 feet away from you. The benefit of a big sword like this is it lets you clear those pikes and approach the line, right? So did pike heads occasionally get chopped off? Maybe, right? Probably it happened. Was that the primary goal of these? No, I don't think so. I think the goal of this sword was to break lines of pikemen, not to break pikes. Thank you. <laughs>